Hi everyone and welcome to your first official digital lesson for mass communication, media, and society. Today we're going to be going over relevant media terms while I touch ever so briefly on the evolution of media over time from carrier pigeons to whatever TikTok is. We do this in order to set the tone for the course and to be sure that we're all on the same page when it comes to using and applying the different terms throughout the semester. So let's get started. First, we'll go over five key terms. Communication, mass media, society, bias, and mind space. We'll define them and hope to create some understanding around their meanings as well. Okay, so communication, the basis for the course. Communication can be defined as a systematic process or how we arrive at shared meanings through message exchange. Now, that's a simplified definition, I know, but it really does get at the heart of communication. And most importantly, that communication relies on the experience of creating shared meanings as we exchange different messages, whether verbal, text, nonverbal, and also through various channels like voice, video, audio, text, and the like. So. Let's deconstruct this a little more. Let's assume that we, human beings, create the actual meanings that we share and exchange. Here's an example. Close your eyes. No, really. Like, really do it, right? Now, imagine or picture a dog. What comes to mind? A Labradoodle, a Chihuahua, your dog, a cartoon dog? Okay, go ahead and open your eyes if you haven't already. You see, we create the meaning for dog, right? And this is already proven complicated because chances are you and I didn't imagine or picture the same exact dog. Perhaps it's clear that why we don't always share definitions or meanings in life, especially of more abstract terms like love, hate, fairness, and the like, is because we all have our own prototype definitions in our minds. Now, many communication scholars believe that the meanings we ascribe to our communication ultimately shape our reality or perception. So, for example, the term policeman or fireman, these might be commonplace, but in naming man or men, they place males at the center or the prototype examples of the profession. While the term male nurse, on the other hand, stands out a bit more, right? And that's because as a Western society, we often find or we've come to the understanding that the default gender for a nurse is most often <clears throat> a woman. What other examples do you have? Okay, so now let's take it to the mass level and define mass communication. Mass communication is how messages are formulated and received, but also how they affect audiences of individuals and society at large. This definition also brings to mind issues of power or who controls voices in the media. Now, this definition sounds a lot like the name of this class, so why the change of the course name from mass communication to media and society? Well, years ago, this class that you're in right now would have been called mass communication, but we've more recently changed the name to media and society because it helps us understand a bit more about the process. Let me explain. Moving from mass media to society, we can ask ourselves really important questions about the nature of mass communication and the functions of media, especially new media, which is defined as any form of communication post-internet. For example, we can ask, is media best understood as a vehicle for carrying messages to large audiences? Is media, which is plural, by the way, for medium, best understood as a tangible thing, like a phone or a computer, an actual text message or an app? Perhaps media functions more like an institution, like school or work or church, for example, with rules and gatekeepers, norms, and the like. Maybe we should think first about what to include in our definition of media and what not to include, which might mean we need to take a look at the overall purpose 
of the media. Now, the purposes of the media are to inform, entertain, and persuade. And I might argue that we could add a few things to that definition, which we will later in the module. For example, it's function to help us create, to identify as a self or even alongside others, to advocate or transform for uh, social change, even to function as crisis relief. Think, for example, about recent disasters in our society, and there's a lot of dumpster fires you can pick from. What role does the media have in mediating that crisis? Okay, on to the next term, which is society. And what is society? Is it a collective, an ideology, a collective ideology? I don't know. Let's ask our good friends at Merriam-Webster. They have four definitions. The first, a companionship or association with one's fellows. Eh. Number two, a voluntary association of individuals for common ends. Closer, but no. How about an organized group working together because of common interests, beliefs, or professions? Okay, that's a little bit better. Finally, let's stick with this. An enduring and cooperating social group whose members have developed organized patterns of relationships through interaction with one another, often found in a community, nation, or broad grouping of people having common traditions, institutions, and collective acti activities. Boom. More terms, wrapping up, bias and mind space. Two terms that are going to come up often in class. First, biased, as in biased news or journalism. So a bias is an inclination of temperament or outlook. In other words, it's a prejudice in favor of or against a thing, a person, or a group compared with another, usually in a way considered to be unfair. Hmm. Yet we hear so many claims about media bias. Now, we'll explore that later, but it's an important term to think about when discussing media because mass and mediated communication channels are often challenged or charged with being biased. And not always in a bad way. Think back to our dog example from before. Was it bad that you thought of your dog or a cartoon dog and not mine? No. It was simply the prototype that was in your mind, which was influenced to a great degree by many social agents. And that's simply your version of a dog. Finally, mind space. You can think of mind space as mental real estate, perhaps even acreage, competing industries that vie for your mind space, or in other words, Companies, groups, networks, associations that want to occupy, take up residence in your mind. This term is best defined by giving an example of companies that have achieved mind space in many. Do you use words, for example, like Kleenex, Chapstick, Band-Aid, or Windex? Well, those are brands. Right? Kleenex is a brand of tissue, but I often say hand me a Kleenex, not a tissue. Just like a Band-Aid is a company that sells bandages. What others can you think of? Well, my friends, that wraps up most of the lesson on relevant terms. Now, in the next lesson, you'll see a brief video about the history and evolution of the media, and I'm not going to lie, I did not create it. It's from YouTube, but why reinvent the wheel? Instead, I'll give you my 30-second recap here. What's important to note is that mass communication has a long history, from oral societies who spoke their traditions into being, to written cultures who recorded their stories. Type and printing shifted communication on a really major scale, enabling people to make their messages permanent, therefore transcending space and time. Newspapers played a major role in the urbanization of societies and journalism as a career field. Radio allowed people to send messages through airwaves and reach audiences miles away. This gave way to music, talk shows, news delivery channels, and more. Telephones, well, those just made us lazy, while TVs turned listeners into viewers through imagery and 
production. Cable? I mean, who even has cable anymore? Next. But if you grew up with a friend who had a black box, then you feel me. Paid sponsorships, networking, entertainment, media giants, the whole deal. Then, holy mackerel, don't even get me started with the interweb, y'all. The World Wide Web. Did you hear me? World Wide. Well, that is, of course, despite the fact that much of the world still doesn't have internet connectivity, but we'll still use the term. Well, the World Wide Web turned the human race into a global village as we watched, listened, and accessed the same information across time zones and nations, really without any regard to cultural boundaries or understanding that the interpretations might be different. Then smartphones. I mean, they're smart. So that's cool. We use human words for devices. Like I'm smart and my phone is smart. Anyway, I'm over it. Done. Watch the next video. Thanks.